A very good evening to you. You're joining Prime Time English News on News First. Before we head into the stories in detail, a sort of a silver lining. A uh, range of high-tech medical equipment developed by the academic staff and students of the Sir John Kotlavala uh, Defence University were exhibited for the media today. The innovation equipment, including a robotic meal delivery system for infected patients in hospitals, has been developed to combat the spread of COVID-19 and to protect the health care of the workers. These are the footage that you are viewing. This is the meal delivery system that has been put in place by the students of the KDU. There is also a ventilator that has been created. Innovations of the students of the Kotalavala Defence University. While these are the innovations and creations of the youth of our nation, boys and girls, youth of our nation, these should be commended and encouraged. Now, we as a people, we as a nation have the ability to bounce back from the situation we are in if we are responsible. While keeping that side of the story in mind, we also encourage innovations of this nature where the world will take a look at Sri Lanka and we all in Sri Lanka can be proud of these students. We encourage the youth of our nation to come forward with creations and innovations such as this. As a nation, we can come through, come out of this situation and as a nation, we can rise up. So let's rise up Sri Lanka. I will meet you in the studio with the stories after the headlines. Twelve villagers in Polonnaruwa isolated. Assistance of private hospitals to be obtained to scale up the number of daily PCR tests. Former Speaker Karu Jayasurya says he does not want another constitutional crisis and no intention of convening parliament unilaterally. COVID-19 threatens to hinder reopening of courts on Monday. Import duty on fuel increased, surcharge imposed. Wildlife officer shot dead by poachers at the Galloya National Park. Three people, including a Pradeshya Sabha member in Rikil Lagaskada, remanded for allegedly assaulting excise officers. Let's take a look at those stories in detail now. Total COVID-19 infections in the country rose to 340 today after 20 people tested positive for the virus yesterday. Eight more cases of COVID-19 have been discovered so far today. The third COVID-19 infection in the Kurunagala district was reported from the Pubbova area in Katupotha, which falls under the purview of the Variapola Police Division. Deputy Director of the Kurunagala Teaching Hospital, Dr. Chandana Kandagamo, said the patient had tested positive for the virus this evening. It has been revealed that the patient had been employed with another infected patient in the Lankapura area and had travelled to Variapola on a motorcycle. The family of the patient has also been sent for quarantine. Three police officers who had attended to the patient when he had visited the police station have also been directed to serve quarantine. Twelve villages in the Lankapura division in the Polonarwa district have been isolated. This includes Lankapura, Veerapura, Pumadia, Pulastigama, Abeypura, Somapura, Baudhartagama, Sangabodigama, Alahilalpura, Rifaipura, Tambala, and Patunugama. 43 individuals from 11 families in Pumadia have been sent to two quarantine centres in Batikalo. The remaining villagers in all 12 villages have been informed to serve quarantine in their homes. Around 1,000 individuals live in these 12 villages. 400 individuals had gone to the market. Because the vendors are spread across a few villages, we decided to lock down all 12 villages. We are working to find any more links too. The villagers have been isolated as a sailor from the Sri Lanka Navy from the Pumadia village has been found to have been a coronavirus patient. This sailor, who serves at the naval base in Valisara, had arrived at his village on the 18th of April to spend his holidays. He is currently receiving treatment at the Polonarua Hospital. The Sri Lanka Transport Board has disinfected the Anuradhapura bus depot as a result of the fear of a coronavirus outbreak. 
The neighbor of a sailor who has been identified as a COVID-19 patient is an employee at the depot. Information has surfaced that those who closely associated the sailor had been in close contact with this individual too. Health authorities of the Anuradhapura Municipal Council disinfected the area. The depot was reopened after all due processes were followed. Four more residents of Bandara Naikamavata in Colombo have been identified as coronavirus patients following the reviewing of PCR test reports last evening. A number of individuals with links to a barber in the area were also subject to the PCR test today. The mother of a youth who had close contact with a COVID-19 patient reported from Piliandala has also been taken to the Homagama Hospital on suspicion of having contracted COVID-19. The health authorities made the decision as she had developed a cold and a fever. While she is a resident of J.D. Solomon Mavata in Piliandala, her husband serves as an employee at the Sri Lanka Transport Board. The 18-year-old son called me and told me that his mother is unwell. I asked whether he had a connection to that patient that we found. He said that he took a jackfruit and had gone about with that patient on a motorbike. The sad thing is that they hid this from us, even though we visited them. With the closure of the Paliagura fish market, a large number of people gathered in Pitipana in Nigambo. It did not seem that they were following any of the health advisories issued. Now, the Ministry of Health has decided to obtain the assistance of private hospitals to conduct PCR tests. The decision has been reached in a bid to increase the number of PCR tests conducted on a daily basis since the number of COVID-19 cases in the country has increased. Therefore, the assistance of private hospitals will be obtained to enhance the quantity of PCR tests being conducted. A media briefing was held at the National Operations Centre to combat COVID-19 today. Sri Lanka Navika Udav Dayat, Sesuni Lake, Polonaru Pradesh Padinchi, Oh, a sailor of the Sri Lanka Navy from Polonnaru had tested positive for COVID-19 yesterday. In light of this, the Lankapura village where he resides has been classified an isolated village. We have also taken steps to direct to quarantine those who had contact with him, especially those in the Navy dorms. PCR tests will be conducted on them. Sri Lanka Navy ka hamuda ave, I mean, onge PCR parikshane ki rimata kattu tu karla di beno. Me nirodayana saha roga valakvi. According to the provisions of the Quarantine and Prevention of Diseases Act, the Director General of Health Services has empowered the acting IGP to institute action against anyone who is acting in an unruly manner, even during the time when curfew is not in effect. If a certain person does not adhere to the guidelines issued by health authorities, even during the time when curfew is not in effect, that person can be arrested and legal action can be taken against them according to quarantine rules. <laughs> Tense situations arose at several places in the island today during the distribution of the allowance of 5,000 rupees among those who have lost their livelihoods due to the prevailing situation in the country. They say that they cannot give the allowance until the 31st. They asked us to file an appeal. We did so. A group of residents in the Katukurunde area in Kottawa protested against the alleged mishandling of the initiative to provide an allowance of 5,000 rupees. Why are they doing this to innocent people like us? They said that the allowance would be granted yesterday, but they didn't. A member of the Venapur Pradeshya Sabha representing the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna and her husband, who were arrested for obstructing the duties of the Gramani Udari in the Dankotu area in Koswata, were released on bail today. They were granted bail after being produced before the Maravila Magistrates Court. 
The Gram Niradari had filed a complaint with the police against the Pradesh Sabha member and her husband, who is the son of the officer. <laughs> All Grama Niradaris in the area staged a protest opposite the police station, urging that the law be enforced against the suspects. They had also protested against the chairman of the Venapu Pradesh Sabha, Susanta Pereira, who had arrived at the location. <laughs> The Pradesh Sabha member and her husband were inquiring regarding the people who had been included in the list. Then the husband pointed a finger at me and said that they would slap me and prevent me from entering the area. The names of many people have not been included in the list. My husband drove me to work considering the plight of the innocent children. A person who had assisted the Gramanil Dari in obtaining details of a person in Razinpura Hambantota to provide the 5,000 rupee allowance has been assaulted. He is receiving treatment at the Hambantota District Hospital. The Gramanil Dari had asked me to meet him to collect the 5,000 rupee allowance. As I arrived, I was assaulted from behind and injured as a result. I managed to stop one person from attacking, but I couldn't stop the other. Former UNP parliamentarian Dilip Vedarachi visited the victim at the hospital today. I do not know anything regarding Razik's incident. This had taken place in the village. The father lives in house number 10. Therefore, we decided to give the allowance to the occupants of house 10 upon 1. We removed the beneficiary from the list based on Razik's wish. The policeman did not give us anything. Then we went to file a complaint regarding this. When he saw us returning, he attempted to assault my son by threatening us against filing a complaint. Afterwards, our brothers fought and we were attacked. <laughs> Meanwhile, a member of the Panudura Pradesh Sabha has also been hospitalized after being assaulted. <laughs> <laughs> the inquest was carried out by the Monragala magistrate this morning. The body was then taken to the Monragala district hospital for the post-mortem examination. 25-year-old Pradeep Bandara had been assigned to the Mullegama office of the wildlife department in Bibile a mere four months ago. He had been recruited while receiving education at the Southeastern University. This is very unfortunate. We have already arrested four people connected to this incident. The law will be strictly enforced. Police have been able to seize the firearm that was used in the shooting. A situation where local excise officials were attacked was reported from Rikilagaskade last night. The excise department officials had gone to the area around 11.30 p.m. yesterday to enforce the decision of the government to prevent the sale of alcohol. The action was based on a tip-off received by the Central Province Special Excise Raid Unit. Later, a group that arrived on two bikes and a motor vehicle had obstructed the excise officers. The excise officers stated that Sumit Veera Surya, the group leader of the Sri Lanka Padujana Peramuna in the Hangurankita Pradesya Sabha, was among those in the group. Uh, Due to the situation, we had to completely abandon the raid. When this particular politician had arrived at this location and attempted to pull his personal weapon on the officers, his children stopped him. Due to these kinds of situations, state employees are unable to discharge their duties. We condemn putting state employees in these kinds of situations. During the curfew, these officials are working considering on one side the threat of corona and on the other side the danger of their health. The public must support these officials. Three persons, including SLPP member, the Hangurankita Pradesh Sabha, Sumit Veera Surya, were arrested and remanded until the 27th of this month after being produced before the Valapane Magistrates Court. Meanwhile, public officials, including Gramaniladaris in Nuarelia, stepped aside from official duties today, citing political interference in the distribution of the 5,000 rupee allowance program. 
These officials met with the Nuorelia District Secretary today to air their grievances. We know that there is a program to distribute allowances among families who have no mode of income. We were carrying out this project in a proper manner with the cooperation of each other through our committees. However, state officers, including Graman Nedaris, experienced several inconveniences as we started to accept appeals. Politicians stormed into our offices and obstructed us from carrying out our duties. When we complained regarding this incident to the police, these politicians influenced the public to protest against us. These officers had been inconvenienced at times. Some brandished knives as they threatened them. The Grama Niladaris were sometimes forced to hide and escape their officers. Such activities are being carried out by local authority politicians who are affiliated to political parties. They were the ones who caused hardships for us. We had even requested the police to provide us security at our offices. Can the Speaker reconvene Parliament? Still in your local news, the Supreme Court announced sittings for the second term of 2020 on Monday, 27th April 2020 will not take place if the situation in the locality of the Superior Courts complex continues to be identified as an area unsafe for the public to access and move around. The statement goes on to note, however, upon an application to hear a case on the basis of urgency, after considering the merits and the circumstances, if court is satisfied on the availability of such circumstances, court in its discretion would make an appropriate order in that regard. In order to ensure effective compliance with government health advisories, including advisories on social distancing and to avoid congestion, no person other than the counsel or the attorney of a party or a person who is unrepresented will be allowed presence in courtrooms unless prior permission has been granted by the court on an application by a counsel or an attorney. Former Speaker Karuja Surya has pointed out that he does not have any intention of reconvening Parliament unilaterally. He had expressed this opinion when the Constitutional Council convened today. According to the powers vested with the Constitutional Council through the Constitution, the Parliament can be reconvened even at a time it has been dissolved. <laughs> I do not think he has that power. Those are matters that require the Supreme Court's determination. Neither president nor a government can do what they like and shun the things that they don't like. That is shallow and illegal. Constitutionally, the president possesses the power to refer to the Supreme Court if a certain matter is unclear. He has vowed to uphold the Constitution. Maitri Palasiri Sena held a similar stubborn stance earlier and in the end the country was destroyed and along with it his image. The most pertinent thing to do at this juncture is to seek the Supreme Court's determination. The Parliament election has been scheduled to be held on the 20th of June. Therefore, the Gazette issued by the President is already invalid. He cannot re-establish a new Parliament by the 14th of May. As a responsible state leader, he should seek the determination of the court instead of dividing the country. That is the responsibility that has been given to him through the constitution of the country. It is not his personal decision. Meanwhile, the chairman of the Constitutional Council, Karu Jayasuri, had opined during the meeting today that the country does not want another constitutional crisis amid the battle against COVID-19, adding that the executive should take all necessary efforts to avert the crisis. The former speaker has also said, in a dispute, he will be bound to uphold the judiciary's decision. The Constitutional Council convened this morning at the speaker's official residence. The meeting held at the speaker's official residence as attended by Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa, former leader of the opposition Sajid Premadasa, Al Samandan, Thalata Atukorala, Mahindra Samarasinghe, Bimal Ratnayaka, N. Selva Kumaran and Ahmad Javed Yusuf. Dr. Jayant Danapala, who is one of the three civil society representatives on the council, was not present at today's meeting. Meanwhile, all major political parties express their views on whether or not parliament can be reconvened. We first take a look at the sentiments of the ruling party. Marthu Devinda, Janadipati Tuma Parliamento Visruahar Narada Prakashane, Parliamento Matuarne Pawatona Dinevidi April Masi. 
The President, issuing a gazette to dissolve Parliament on the 2nd of March, announced that the election would be held on the 25th of April and that the new Parliament would be convened on the 14th of May. No one has determined that the Gazette is illegal or unconstitutional. At the same time, the National Election Commission, taking into consideration the current situation surrounding the coronavirus, had decided to indefinitely postpone the election on the 19th of April. No one said that this is unconstitutional as well. The Election Commission subsequently announced that the poll will be held on the 20th of June. The opposition is now claiming that the Gazette issued to dissolve Parliament on the 2nd of March is invalid. This is a hilarious situation. It was the President who dissolved Parliament. The date for the election was fixed for the 20th of June by the Election Commission. How can a decision made by the Election Commission have an impact on a decision made by the President? We never heard that the action of one person has an impact on another. Our president or the government will never initiate any discussion that would threaten the well-being of the general public. After the parliament was dissolved, there was no speaker and this was confirmed by the attorney general. So Mandiran and his clan are attempting to obtain a court determination to reconvene parliament. They are of the view that they can influence the judiciary as they did in the past. Why are they asking us to reconvene parliament? Have they discovered a medicine for Corona? Dem anur disa naegala, sumantiran la, sambandan la, Ranil Vikram Singh la, Sajit Premadas la, Mahan Sivila, Parayesh Nagar la, Corona walta behita kuya agar dumi parliament tu kena mangiyan. What good did the previous parliament do? It was a parliament that failed to prevent the April 21st attacks. A parliament that watched by as hundreds of innocent people were killed. Plan hitu parliament tu ak. Me saala wa abiga bada opi piru nata passe. E minute sunta wandi denna aur duga nang balang hitu bu parliament tu ak. Sapi pahedi loke you know. Parnam parliament tu kendawa nawa. We clearly state that the previous parliament does not need to be reconvened. We do not need to bring back to power a parliament that was rejected by the general public. Parliament was dissolved legally and a date for the election was announced. The National Elections Commission thereafter changed the date for the election. He had intervened in this regard. Though they urge us to refrain from holding the election, the truth is a majority of the public requests us to hold this election as soon as possible. There is no speaker at present who has the power to reconvene parliament. There is no speaker or an opposition leader in the country. At present, the president is the only political authority that has received a mandate from the general public. Apart from the president, it is the prime minister and the cabinet of ministers. Here is how the Samagi Jana Balavege responded regarding the matter. If the prevailing health crisis is overcome and the government can give us a medical assurance on it, we are prepared to face an election at any given time. However, we want the SLPP and the Alliance do not let this decision threaten the well-being of the general public. Sri Lanka is the one and only country in the world where its health minister announced the 19th of April as the deadline to eradicate the virus from the country. Well, I would like to remind the health minister we have already passed this date. I urge the government to refrain from making such statements on a non-scientific basis to gain political advantage. All staff at hospitals, starting from janitorial staff, have sacrificed immensely. They do not care about the party symbol. Doctors or the army commander or the police spokesperson do not care about a symbol. We must first solve this crisis. We urge the government do not let the hard work and sacrifices of these individuals go to waste. These heroes did not sacrifice so much to win any votes. They did it for the people. So we urge the government pay attention to the advice of the GMOA and the other medical specialists and guide this country towards the right direction. <laughs> The entire opposition, including the Tamil National Alliance, have collectively decided to support moves to allocate more funds for the eradication of coronavirus and to allow the government to make any decision in this regard. I am surprised that the government is afraid to reconvene parliament against such a backdrop. The JVP's Vasanta Samarasingha shared his party's views on the matter. The government's agenda was to conduct the election over the dead bodies of the people. However, by today, the Elections Commission has taught the government a lesson by showing it that the lives of the people matter more. According to the constitution of our country, the parliament cannot remain inactive for more than three months. The parliament holds the ultimate control over the finances of the country. If parliament is reconvened, people like Basil Rajapaksha cannot continue to operate economic committees. The task forces cannot operate. Why? Because those do not fall under the state process. 
They need to be integrated into the state process. The parliament is accountable. The government's conduct only shows us that they are attempting to undermine the sacrifice made by the Triforces, police, health sector and voluntary organizations and use it to gain power by underhanded means. On to a story that we received just now, 30 Navy personnel at the Valisera Navy camp, including the sailor from Polon Narua, has been tested positive for COVID-19. This was confirmed a short while ago by Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavey and the Silva. We will have the views expressed by the Army Commander shortly in the bulletin. This brings the total number of COVID-19 positive patients in the country to 368. This brings the total number to 368. We will have the views expressed by the Army Commander in the bulletin shortly. We now draw your attention towards villagers in Mahiangane who live in fear due to the threat posed by wild elephants. Elephants have been encroaching on the Vatavana area in Mahiangania in the recent past. We cannot install electric fences surrounding this place because if the elephant attacks our house, we will not be able to escape. Therefore, we sleep in tree houses at night. The elephants which enter this village only leave after damaging a few houses. As the sun sets, these elephants encroach on the village in search of paddy or other food items. The people who try to help the elephants also fall victim to the attacks. The elephant broke into my house around 4 in the morning. It left only after taking the paddy. Infants and mothers in the village are injured when villagers flee for their lives. However, fortunately, their lives have been saved. They do not remove these elephants from this area. The government is acquiring the habitats of the elephants to run farms. It is we who fall in trouble when the elephants have no place to go. Their habitats are given to wealthy businessmen to run farms. Yesterday, elephants had destroyed three houses in this area. A total of 25 houses were damaged over the past month. The All Ceylon Jamiatul Ulama has announced that the crescent moon symbolizing the beginning of the Islamic holy month of Ramadan was not sighted today. Accordingly, Muslims in Sri Lanka will commence their month-long daily fast from Saturday the 25th of April. With that, we go in for a short commercial break. Wajib sih nirdeshi kerana itu mula mesahan pelik bandar beri bis terasa dah. Macam di bank ini, bisnesnya itu amat umum ada setan yang hasam bandar mana. Bintu ayah kai kai dekai harus ia suka itu sih panas haya. Bintu ayah kai kai dekai harus ia suka itu panas haya. Bintu ayah kai kai dekai itu sih bisnesnya haya ikas seperti haya. Bintu ayah kai kai dekai itu sih anu dekai itu sih hada amat mana. Let's now take a look at some of the cabinet decisions taken yesterday. India no santi te bank ini. 
Sri Lanka's cabinet of ministers approved a 400 million US dollar swap line with the Reserve Bank of India. The finance ministry together with the central bank has implemented a very efficient mechanism to prevent the Sri Lanka rupee from depreciating to over 200 rupees against the US dollar. The decision to approve the swap of 400 million US dollars under the SARC swap facility and bring in dollars to the country is in line with these measures. Minister Gunavadana expressed these views regarding the provisions of relief to the agricultural sector. The government will set a guaranteed price for 14 main crops cultivated during the Yala season. Farmers of these crops will be paid this set price. If the market price is lower, the government will purchase the produce at the guaranteed price. The price of a kilo of corn will be set at 50 rupees, a kilo of potatoes at 100 rupees, a kilo of big onions at 100 rupees, a kilo of red onions at 110 rupees, a kilo of green peas at 200 rupees, a kilo of dried chili at 650 rupees, and a kilo of garlic at 350 rupees. Inguru, the minister further explained the implications of restricting imports to the country. If an importer is unable to continue his business operations due to the inability to import raw materials and if the raw material he requires cannot be produced locally, we request such importers to present their issues to the Ministry of Finance. All local inbound tour operators will be exempt from VAT with effect from April 2020. <laughs> Journalists also queried about the allegations raised by the opposition with regards to money printing. <laughs> You cannot print money like that. Teach them what money printing is. We are ready to debate this matter. Ask them to come forward for a debate. Arnab Goswami, the co-founder of Indian television channel Republic TV and his wife have been attacked last night. Arnab Goswami is the president of the News Broadcasting Association. Secretary General of NBF R. J. Krishna said, quote, NBF strongly condemns the attempt to attack Arnab for performing his professional duty, unquote. And I was driving my car with my wife. We were both sitting in the front seat. My car was, uh, was uh, overtaken by two people in a bike. Uh, they, were, they, they, kept, they kept driving their bike parallel to my car for some time and they kept looking to the left. Then they quickly overtook my car and uh, they, the car, their, their bike stopped. At that point of time, one of the two people started pointing specifically at me and he turned his bike back and he came right next to my car and then they started hitting my car with something and trying to break the window pane of my car. I ducked at that point of time. They continued to hammer and try to break the pane of my car uh, then I, I realized that this was, this was some kind of an attack. Then they started taking out bottles and they were furiously throwing liquids at my, uh, at my car. Indian media has reported that the duo were attacked by a section of a particular political party in Mumbai. Quoting police, media reported that the two attackers were apprehended and that they are verifying their political affiliation. News First condemns the shameful, cowardly attack on Arnab Goswami and his wife and considers it an attack on the freedom of free and fair reportage. News First strongly believes that this sort of act cannot go unpunished by the law, as if attacks of this nature are allowed to continue with impunity, it will result in a massive infringement on the people's right to know. Those who carried out the attack against Arnab Goswami have committed... More news on the other side.
රජයේ උපදෙස් පරිදි ක්‍රියාත්මක ණය සහන මහජන බැංකුවේ ගණදෙනුකාර බහුතරුන් වෙත ලබා ගැනීම සඳහා අයදුම් කරුගේ නම ජාතික හැඳුනුම් පත් අංකය ජංගම හෝ ඉතුරු ගිණුම් අංකය ණය මුදල යන තොරතුරු 0481 481 461 461 යන දුරකතන අංක වලට SMS මගින් හෝ Viber WhatsApp ඉමෝ යන ඕනෑම මාධ්‍යයක් හරහා 2020 අප්‍රේල් මාස 30 වෙනි දිනට පෙර ඉල්ලුම් කරන්න නැතිනම් corona relief at peoplesbank.lk විද්‍යුත් ලිපිනයට යොමු කරන්න Welcome back to the news we have more details of the story that we reported earlier on 30 navy personnel attached to the Valisara navy camp being tested positive for covid-19 A sailor who was on leave had been admitted to the Valikanda hospital yesterday after he had fallen ill. Following a PCR test conducted on the sailor, it had been revealed that he was infected with COVID-19. Subsequently, immediate steps were taken to quarantine the quarters of the Valisara Navy camp the infected sailor was attached to. All sailors at the quarters and those who had contact with the infected sailor were given PCR tests thereafter. We received the results of the PCR tests a short while ago. Accordingly, 30 people, including the initial sailor, have tested positive for COVID-19. In light of this discovery, the Navy commander took steps to classify the Valisara Navy camp isolation zone yesterday. 101 Sri Lankan students stranded in India were repatriated today on board a specially chartered Sri Lankan Airlines flight. The duty manager at the Bandaranaike International Airport at Katunaike noted that the flight carrying the 101 Sri Lankan students including UL1146 landed at 2:26 p.m. today. The students underwent several tests at the airport premises. On Monday 113 students who had been repatriated from Pakistan were immediately directed to quarantine centers. A statement issued by Sri Lankan Airlines notes that 117 Sri Lankans will be repatriated from Coimbatore, India, and another 93 Sri Lankans will be repatriated from Kathmandu, Nepal, tomorrow. Palsi Asua, Vishwavidyalaya. 580 students are being educated in India through programs of the University Grants Commission. We obtained the list from the UGC and have referred it to the Secretary of Dinesh Gunawardena's ministry. They are being repatriated in groups. One group arrived today and have been directed to quarantine. In addition to this as the minister of higher education I will provide information next week on the establishment of a new website of the UGC this will enable all Sri Lankan students overseas to provide their information to us Sielu toroturu apita denun dena nes Treasury Secretary Sr article says the seventh and final review under the IMF's extended fund facility or the EFF to Sri Lanka will not take place as scheduled and will only take place after the government presents a new budget He also said Sri Lanka is currently in discussion with several foreign lenders including the World Bank, IMF and Asian Development Bank to support Sri Lanka's financial needs. Speaking to the news first, Secretary to the Treasury SR Artikala said the Finance Ministry is holding discussions with the World Bank to accelerate the disbursement of funds for COVID-19 related activities. The Treasury Secretary added that the request made to the IMF on its rapid credit facility is still under review. The Secretary said, quote, "We aim to strengthen our foreign currency reserves with the funds received from this facility." End quote. Discussions are also underway with the Asian Development Bank for a 300 million US dollar budget support program. Will the government face challenges in the future when spending funds on the approval of parliament journalists quizzed minister bandula gunawardena regarding the situation today at the media briefing held to announce cabinet decisions vyavastha adutiyak matu wena tatyak penawa den gotan account eken mudal pasune amathuma april 30 sendha sandaha pamanai yalith This is a very shallow attempt being carried out through a diaspora. According to Article 48 of the Constitution, Parliament commands full control over finances of the country. Once a Parliament has been dissolved, it cannot be reconvened by anyone apart from the President. He was appointed the President through the mandate of the people. Parliament was not the same as the Parliament. The Parliament was not the same as the Parliament. The Parliament was not the same as the Parliament. जनाधिपति वर्य किसी के निकुट नवत He has been granted power to the constitution to spend money without any debt limits for three months after a new parliament is appointed. Legal professionals have advised the president in this regard. Accordingly, the president has the power to spend money 
until three months after a new parliament is appointed. In a normal situation, this is correct, where parliament is dissolved and for a three-month period from then, funds can be utilised until the new parliament convenes. But if the election has been postponed indefinitely, to say that the president can spend public funds throughout this period, as per his prerogative, is unconstitutional. As per Articles 148, 49 and 50 of the Constitution, Parliament is the ultimate authority on management of public finances. The legislature must give approval for the executive to spend these funds. What has happened now is that the government appointed by the president did not present a budget. They only presented a vote on account for expenses from January to the end of April. On the 3rd or 4th of March, once the election date had been announced, the Finance Ministry issued a report in which it appeared to indicate that the President had approved a vote on account for a further three months. The report indicates a certain amount of money to be collected in taxes and a certain amount of money to be spent. This cannot be done because it is the legislature that must pass a vote on account. Parliament must do it. The President cannot present and adopt a vote on account by himself. There is nothing of the sort in the Constitution. With effect from today, the Finance Ministry has hiked up the import duty on fuel for two months as oil prices are crashing in the world market owing to a decline in demand and shortage of shortage storage capacity. Rather, The government has reiterated on several occasions that retail oil prices will not change for a year. A notice sent by Prime Minister Mahindra Rajpaksa as Finance Minister reads that the surcharge on customs duty for octane 95 petrol has been increased from 15 rupees to 49 rupees and doubled for super diesel from 20 rupees to 40 rupees. Treasury Secretary S. R. Artigala, in an internal letter, said the Finance Minister has also, quote, agreed to withdraw the duty waiver of 5 rupees per litre, end quote, on octane 92 petrol. The duty waiver has been granted on the 13th of March and was expected to be in effect for two months. But the decision has been revised as the country continues to battle with an economic crisis amidst the novel coronavirus. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Rajpaksa has also imposed a customs general duty of 50 rupees for octane 92 and octane 95 petrol and 25 rupees for diesel. As at this evening, West Texas Intermediate Crude was trading at less than 20 US dollars per barrel. Though global oil prices have declined, the Sri Lanka rupee has depreciated against the US dollar. So we have to pay more rupees for a dollar. On the other hand, consumption of fuel has declined. The excess funds will be transferred to the treasury and will be utilized to provide relief to the general public. In a few more days, fuel prices may be lower than the price we pay for water. However, in order to benefit from this, we must store fuel. We have imposed an additional tax on IOC. However, we propose that the finance ministry reduces and revises this tax. Oil prices in the global market declined drastically. But why has the present government failed to pass on this benefit to the general public? A litre of 92 octane petrol currently stands at 137 rupees. But in line with global oil prices, one litre can be given at 43 rupees. One litre of 95 octane petrol is 161 rupees. This can be given at 51 rupees per litre. A litre of diesel is 104 rupees. This can be given at 35 rupees. A litre of super diesel is 132 rupees. This can be given at 44 rupees per litre. The government keeps a margin of 90 rupees for every litre of 92 octane petrol and a margin of 106 rupees for every litre of 95 octane petrol. For every litre of kerosene, the government keeps a margin of 47 rupees. Why is the government not passing this benefit to the poor man? I urge the government refrain from continuing such unfair practices. Advisor to the Prime Minister, former Central Bank Governor Ajit Nivad Cabral had this to say today on plans to release 20% funds from the Employees Provident Fund or the EPF to its members in order to increase money circulation in the economy. What I proposed was to provide EPF funds to EPF members themselves, not to anyone else. I see that some people had criticized this on Facebook, asking if the government was taking this money. 
No, this is being given to the EPF members. Those who want to build a house can build a house. Those who want to buy a car can buy a car. Those who need to pay off a lease can pay off a lease. They can settle credit card debt. They can spend it on their daughter's wedding if they want. They can spend it on anything. We are providing their money to them given the need of the country. There's nothing to be concerned about here. I see some people asking if Cabral is taking the money. This is a political statement. This is one proposal. I hope to make a hundred or more proposals like this. I believe there needs to be a dialogue on such topics. Meanwhile, Cabinet Minister Bandulu Gunwadana said recently that the savings of Sri Lankans overseas would be deposited in Sri Lanka in order to strengthen foreign reserves. The minister clarified this position at the media briefing on cabinet decisions. I saw on a TV channel where Nalaka Godeheva had articulated that it was his personal opinion. As far as Mr. Ramesh Patiran and I are concerned, we have our personal opinions too. But we do not come here to yeah our personal opinions. We have many personal opinions which are not relevant to governance. The cabinet has made a decision and the central bank has opened a special account. A request has been made of Sri Lankans overseas and those with business interests overseas to deposit money in this account due to our liquidity problems. If the money is kept in the account for six months, they will earn 2% more than the usual interest rate. These policy decisions are not made expecting a 100% success rate. When we make economic decisions, we think of the short, medium and long term. What he should do if he hopes to join a government is pray that when the government makes such a policy decision and opens such an account, that money will be deposited. The suggestion uh, that 20% of the EPF money should be released or rather give it back to the people is part of this theoretical thinking. There's absolutely nothing wrong in saying so. What I'm basically saying is because there's no much of a savings habit only, we have established funds like that. That is why the government normally hold the money until somebody reaches 55 years of age. So if people in spend this money, invest this money wisely, there's nothing wrong. But certain, some people might not do that. Then in relation to uh, uh, the minister's comment yesterday about collective responsibility uh, of uh, sticking to the government thinking, uh, yes, that is right. But that doesn't mean uh, uh, us, now for example, independent people like us, just because we are candidates of an election, we can have our own political, uh, economic uh, thinking. Now, in relation to this uh, government relaxing regulations, expecting uh, Sri Lankans living abroad as well as uh, foreigners to bring money in, that's a good suggestion. There's no question about it. But all I said was, within six months, uh, a miracle is not going to happen. It's going to take time because people will look at longer term stability. What is more important is to have the elections and establish a stable government. News First also spoke to the Navy commander with regard to the latest developments of the COVID-19 situation in the country. He said that all sailors who went on leave in the past few days after being on quarantine duty have been called to immediately report back to undergo PCR test. In addition, the Valisera Navy camp has been named an isolation zone and a quarantine center for these Navy personnel when they have been recalled to carry out PCR tests. Now, tune in to our sister channel, Sirisa TV, at 10.30 p.m. today to watch the full interview of President Gotabe Rajapaksa with former secretary to the President Lalit Virathunga. In addition, stars of the hit teledrama RAS on Sirisa TV have also added their voices to the social media sensation, the Rise Up Sri Lanka song. With that, we wrap tonight's English News Bulletin. I've been Chaturang Haparachi. Take care and stay safe.
Negative.